In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Stack Overflow 2022 Developer Survey. All right, so first off, we have education. Most developers, 87% have post-secondary education, some having college or more. So let's take a look at this. It looks like most developers say that they have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, but there are also some with some college uh, without earning a degree and just uh, some with secondary school. So quite a bit of mix. This next graph is about learning to code. So it looks like most people learn by online resources such as videos, blogs, and forums. That's great for me. Others learn from college and university, books, online courses, on-the-job training, and so on. So this makes sense. Let's move down. The next one is online resources to learn how to code. So it looks like technical documentation is at the top, followed by Stack Overflow. That all makes sense. And then blogs, how-to videos, written tutorials, video courses, and so on. All right, and then the online course platforms, Udemy, Coursera, Code Academy, Pluralsight. That makes sense. Udemy is pretty cheap. You can get some very cheap courses there, but you do have to be careful about the quality of courses that you get there. And then let's move on to experience. It looks like uh, most developers have five to nine years of experience. 18, almost 19% have one to four, and then 10 to 14 years is almost 20%. All right, and then years of coding professionally. Looks like professionally, the majority is one to four years followed by five to nine years. All right, let's see what's next. Years of professional coding experience by developer type. So this makes sense. The executives and the managers are going to have more experience over the product managers, developers, designers, and so on. Nothing stands out there. Let's move on to developer roles. Uh, we have most people saying that they are a full stack developer, 46%. And then uh, back end and then front end. So that's interesting. Key territories. We have uh, the demographics here of United States at 18%, and then India, Germany, UK, Canada, France, and so on. Okay, so let's look at age next. Looks like uh, the majority are 25 to 34 years old. That, that makes sense. And then uh, 18 to 24 and 35 to 44 are uh, either side of that. Um, genders, unfortunately, there is uh, a lack of diversity. Uh, but one cool thing here, 91% uh, men, 5% women, basically. But if we go to learning to code, uh, we can see there's quite a bump in the minorities here. So it looks like there are uh, a good bit more minorities that are learning. So hopefully we can continue to work on the diversification here. I think this is an interesting one, neurodiversity. So these are people who have ADHD, anxiety, mood disorders, emotional disorders like depression, bipolar, autism, and dyslexia. And so 10, almost 11% say that they have ADHD. Others, 10% uh, have anxiety. Almost 10% have depression, bipolar, or other emotional or mood disorders, um, autism as well. So this is very good for everyone to understand that you can be a programmer and these do not have to limit you. Personally, I have suffered from anxiety and depression in the past. And so these are things that more people than you think have to deal with. And so this is not something that has to limit you. All right, let's move on to technologies. So we have the most popular technologies. This is the, the cool part about this survey. So of course, JavaScript is at the top, uh, along with HTML and CSS. Those are the building blocks of the internet. You can't have an internet currently without these. So that makes sense that they're on top. Uh, then we have SQL, Python, TypeScript, Java, and then the C's and so on. One thing that I wish, I wish there was a comparison between this year and last year. I don't see any way to do that. So that's interesting. All right, let's see what it's next. Uh, we have databases. So from all respondents, uh, this is uh, MySQL is at the top, Postgres, SQLite, MongoDB, Microsoft SQL, uh, Redis, Maria, and so on. Now this is from all respondents. If we go to professional developers, uh, we've got Postgres at the top this time, and then MySQL SQLite, Microsoft SQL Server, and MongoDB. And then learning to code, we have MySQL, MongoDB, SQLite, Postgres. So it's interesting to see the difference between those who are learning versus professional developers. 
And then moving on to cloud platforms, there's no surprises here. We have AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud at the top. And then web frameworks, we have Node.js, React, jQuery, Express, Angular, Vue. I'm curious why so many are still using jQuery. I haven't used it in at least eight years. Let's see about professional, it's still there. And then learning, it goes down a little bit. That's, that's interesting. All right, let's move on to other frameworks. We've got .NET, NumPy, Pandas, Spring, TensorFlow, Flutter, and so on. And then other tools, NPM, Docker, Yarn. Let's see uh, professional, Docker's at the top for professionals, and then NPM and Yarn. Um, interesting, Kubernetes down here in uh, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so integrated development environment. We have VS Code and Visual Studio at the top. Let's see, professional, same thing, doesn't really change. Awesome. And then asynchronous tools, Jira. Uh, Jira is used by very many companies to keep track of things. I like, I, I like that Notion is here towards the top because Notion is amazing. Uh, Trello is, is okay, but I, I really enjoy Notion. Let's see, professional, doesn't really change there. Learning to code. Notion and Trello at the top for those learning because these are super easy platforms to use. Uh, then of course we have Jira because you're pretty much forced to use Jira. It's it's just the, the way things go, but it's it's okay. All right, synchronous tools. Let's see, we've got Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Slack. Uh, for professionals, Slack is at the top. That makes sense. Of course, it's very, very close between Slack, Teams, and Zoom. Operating systems, it looks like the majority use Windows and then Linux and then Mac OS, uh, WSL, pretty small. Um, and I'd say the majority you probably use Windows because it's cheaper. Um, I would say professionally, let's see, can I switch this to professional? No, oh, oh, it's personal and professional. That's interesting. I would assume that more professionals use Mac uh, over Windows, but it doesn't seem to be the way. Um, most loved, dreaded, dreaded and wanted. All right, so let's look here. Rust is the most loved, followed by Elixir, Clojure, TypeScript, Julia, Python. Uh, let's see, Wanted. Wanted is Rust, Python, TypeScript, Go. Those are pretty pretty well tied for first place. Uh, pretty close. And let's see, what is next? We've got databases. So uh, Loved is Postgres, Redis, MongoDB, SQLite. And then Wanted, Postgres, and MongoDB at the top, Redis, and so on. Awesome, let's look at cloud platforms. Uh, nothing surprising here. We've got the top three still at the top there. Uh, web frameworks, Phoenix. You know what? I am gonna have to look into this because I don't even know what Phoenix is. Uh, Phoenix is very low. Spelt, I understand why that's up there. Dino is awesome. .NET Core, I haven't used it in a very long time, but it looks to be very loved. Next.js, React. Great, let's look at Wanted. React is at the top. Node.js, Vue, Next, Svelte, Django, Angular, Dino. That's that's pretty much in line with what I, I would expect. All right, other frameworks and libraries. Hugging Face Transformers. Okay, I'm gonna have to, hang on. I have no idea what this is. State of the art machine learning for PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Jax. Okay, that's interesting. And it's not something that uh, I have ever used, but it's interesting. It's all at the very top. All right, tidyverse.net, PyTorch, Flutter. Let's look at Wanted, TensorFlow, Flutter, React Native. Interesting. All right, let's uh, move on to other tools. Most loved, Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, Homebrew, Wanted, Docker, Kubernetes, Unreal, Terraform, Unity. Nice. All right, integrated development environments. NeoVim is most loved, interesting. Beats out Visual Studio Code. And then let's look at Wanted, VS Code, Android Studio, that's interesting. All right, let's uh, move on to asynchronous tools, most loved, Notion, what did I tell you? Notion is amazing. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard of some of these others. Let's look at Wanted, really, Jira is at the top, okay. And then Trello and Notion, yeah, it's interesting. All right, synchronous tools, Slack. Yes, wanted Slack. Slack is pretty good. All right, worked with versus want to work with. All right, these are interesting graphs. All right, this first one is programming, scripting, and markup languages. Um, 
yeah these this is a very interesting graph basically it shows you people that use typescript that also like to use or want to use other technologies that's interesting okay uh databases so we've got these databases so um 10,000 people who work with MongoDB want to work with MongoDB, okay? Um, 9,500 who work with MySQL want to work with MongoDB, uh, interesting. Uh, 5,500 who work with SQLite want to work with MongoDB, okay? 7,200 who work with Postgres want to work with MongoDB, okay? Oh, 6,000 who work with MongoDB want to work with Redis, okay? Redis is great for caching. Um, 7,500 who work with MongoDB want to work with Postgres. 5,000 who work with MongoDB want to work with MySQL. So yeah, very, very interesting, very interesting chart here. All right, cloud platforms. I don't think I'm going to go through all of these. This, these charts are just weird. Um, web framework technologies, uh, other frameworks. Let's, let's move on past all of this and let's get to whatever is next. Top paying technologies. That looks good. All right. So programming, scripting, etc. Um, uh, what is this? What geography is this? I wonder. Uh, da, da, da. Doesn't really say. I guess this is just like globally. Uh, closure. Uh, this is interesting. COBOL, 75,000. Um, okay, let's look at databases and da, 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 da. okay Platforms, yeah, I don't I don't know what the full context of this is. I guess it's global averages um, Let's let's move on to the next one changes in salary between 21 and 22 All right, COBOL went from 52,000 to 75 interesting um, Okay Let's see, databases. Uh, it seems to be everything is just increasing by about 20 or 30 grand. Um, okay, platforms, web frameworks, everything is increasing. Well, that's good. Everything is paying more this year. Um, version control systems. Let's see, Git, of course. I mean, everybody should know Git. Professionals, yes, Git. Um, Interacting with version control, most people use the command line. Uh, others use code editor. Uh, I use a mixture. I would say mostly I use the code editor. See professionals, huh? About the same. Okay. Uh, version control platforms. GitHub, of course, is the most used. That's what I use. Uh, Web3, blockchain. Okay, so this is... Uh, what is the question here? Uh, how favorable are you about blockchain crypto? And so basically, what do you think? You Are you favorable or you're not? Looks like the majority are indifferent uh, or favorable. Uh, for professionals, oh, it's about the same. So, so that's good, all right. Uh, blockchain, I don't think it's going away. I think it's gonna be part of the future. So it's good to learn about it. All right, work, work is next. Employment, employment status, looks like most people uh, are employed full-time, professional, of course, uh, full-time or independent contractor, freelancer, or self-employed. That's interesting. Good. All right. Um, geography. So we've got in the United States, employed full-time um, versus India. There's more students, Germany, UK, Canada. Okay. Work environment. Oh, this is good. Okay. So fully remote. Um, 42, 43% fully remote, hybrid, some in-person, 42%, and only about 15% are full in-person. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, I think, especially in this industry, working remote is not a big deal. Uh, company info, I think we'll just kind of skip past that. Salary, okay, so salary, senior exec, 200 grand in the United States. Let's look at all so i guess all is maybe the average globally uh 117 uh india goes down to 51 germany 97 uk and canada okay that's interesting these are what people said they make so i don't know how they could really validate all of this but it's interesting 
Um, salary uh, and experience by developer type. Okay, this is interesting graphs. Of course, managers are gonna make more and they have more experience. So that makes sense. Um, okay, so salary and experience by language. So it looks like Erlang is at the top there and then Closure. Um, Dart is closer to the bottom with less experience. That makes sense, Solidity, because these are uh, Solidity is a newer language, so that would make sense if it pays more, but you have less experience. Uh, COBOL, of course, it's been around for a long time. You should have a lot of experience with it, but it makes about 80 grand. All right. Uh, purchasing technology, I think we'll skip past that. Uh, research, new tools, coding outside of work. Looks like a lot of people code as a hobby outside of work. And the rest of the survey talks about uh, how you use Stack Overflow etc etc we all use stack overflow of course um it's it's there's no nothing wrong with using google and stack overflow and of course uh documentation to help you remember things because none of us can remember everything so this is interesting i, I look forward to this survey every year and uh see the insights again i wish it would have showed like differences between this year and last year like a way to like toggle on and off last year's versus this year um, that would be pretty interesting, but, uh, again, you know, it's great to see where everyone's at, how everyone responded. So look forward to this again next year.